Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ochak Fish Show. We're Silicon Valley's first business and self-improvement podcast for teens hosted by a teen. Me, I'm Sachin Sayal. I'm a 17-year-old award-winning entrepreneur and podcaster from the Bay Area. And I interview remarkable and influential entrepreneurs, executives, investors, and inspiring individuals from all walks of life so we can learn from their stories and level up ourselves. I'm also the co-founder and CEO of 3doshas.com. We're a coaching company transforming lives through 3 Doshas energies from yoga and Ayurveda. The purpose of the show is to inspire you to go for it, which is what the Punjabi word Ochakte means. Today, our very special guest is Mayor Matt Mahan. He is an American politician and tech entrepreneur currently serving as the mayor of San Jose. So, how are you? Welcome to the Ochakte show. And uh, what's new and exciting? Well, thank you, Sachin. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I was very impressed with what you've created, and you're so young. You're just going to yeah. be starting at uh, university here at yeah, San Jose yeah. State, right yeah. next to City Hall, just yeah. a block away. So we'll see more of you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, look forward to the conversation. You asked what's new. Uh, the biggest news from City Hall recently has been that we just passed the budget. Every year we uh, have a big discussion and debate about how to spend over five billion dollars worth of taxpayer money mm-hmm. and this year we're making a historic investment in addressing homelessness building yes. shelter of many different types from safe sleeping and safe parking to tiny homes to converted motel rooms and getting people off the streets faster and connected to services so that's probably uh, personally what i'm most excited about in this budget Awesome. I love it. And you're doing a really good job. I've seen a lot of your videos of you on the news and I've just done a lot of research on you. And I think we're going to talk about this more, but I think the perfect um, like politician to even run a, like a city or state or country should be an entrepreneur. And that's what you were. So we'll talk about that. But just like a basic question, for people time, what does it mean to be a mayor? Like, what is the mayor of the beautiful San Jose, California? Do? Yeah, well, I have a million bosses, almost. We're a city of nearly a million people, biggest city in Northern California. And I view my role as really giving voice to the priorities of the community Mm -hmm. and working with the permanent government that's here. You know, you can say the bureaucracy, if you will, the administration, all the different departments, our professional public servants. I try to work with them to make sure we're delivering, that we are accountable for addressing the big issues facing our community and convert your precious tax dollars that you entrust us with, convert it into real impact. And so what I heard from the community when I decided to run, our former mayor gave me some great advice. He said, you know, don't spend a lot of time going to the fancy events and worrying about endorsements and the interest groups, just go knock on doors. And so I went out and just, personally knocked on over 10,000 doors. And people talked to me about homelessness, crime, blight, uh, how long it takes to get a permit, the quality of their local road. I mean, very basic day-to-day issues that affect people's lives. And so I view my job is holding everybody in this building, we're here at City Hall today, Mm -hmm. accountable for improving those outcomes with the resources that we have. I love that. And um, this is the next question. You're, I said I was going to talk about something. We got to talk about it. You're also a Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur. You were the co-founder and CEO of Brigade, which was the world's first viral network. And you did that for a decade. What made you transition from entrepreneurship to politics? You know, I've, I've always been interested in the public sector yeah. and the um, this, this notion, very idealistic, but I, I believe in it. I think we have to believe in it. Of In a democratic society, we have... We have the town square. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now it's mostly online, you know, like your podcast. But we have to have a forum to come together as a community and discuss and debate and say, where are we going together? Mm -hmm. And what sacrifices are we willing to make to get there? Whether that's tax dollars or our time or other trade-offs that we have to make, such as building housing so that you and your friends can afford to live here. That's a trade-off that a lot of people don't want. More neighbors, more traffic, more noise, but we have to build housing. And so those issues, those big issues that affect all of us have always captivated uh, my attention. I grew up in a small farming town. We had a lot of challenges, high unemployment, high crime. I came to San Jose for opportunity, like everybody who's come here. Got a great education and knew that I wanted to build a life here. And so, you know, I just, while I was in tech, I was really building tools to facilitate civic engagement. And when my second company, Brigade, was acquired by Pinterest in 2019. I did not 
That's, I, that's amazing. Well, right? it wasn't. To be clear, it wasn't. It wasn't a big. I did not know that. I was looking yeah. for that. You, uh, it was. To be clear, it was an aqua hire. I mean, they, oh. they acquired the team, and then the, we sold the IP to oh, another okay. company. Okay. So yes. we, you know, we had. It wasn't some you know giant exit, but that wasn't really the point. Our our goal was to innovate around civic engagement and create oh. tools for people. The first startup I was involved with built one of the very first Facebook applications, yeah, and we were we were used by about two hundred million people around wow. the world. And the through line to all of this, whether it was being a public school teacher or an entrepreneur or now running, running for office and being an elected official, has been trying to help people fully participate in their democracy and create a better society for everyone. Yeah, that's cool. And um, another question, you just, you, said, you just said this, you said you got a great education. You also like, you worked at Princeton universities, you worked at USC, you also worked at UC Davis. Um, I was a fellow. Yep. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't teach, but yes, well, I was, yeah, I was yeah, a yeah, fellow yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I saw in your LinkedIn experience. Yes. That I you were yeah, there. I've been a fellow. Yeah. Um, and then you also, you graduated from Harvard, um, with a, uh, the, the top right. We were, uh, your magna cum laude. How do you pronounce it? Magna cum laude. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Something like that. Uh, yeah, Latin, <laughs> I think. Yeah, something like yeah, that. With, with honors, I think. With honors, yeah. yeah. Um, why is education so important to you? And how, like, what do you think? How do you think education can transform lives? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, to me, it really is the way that we unlock opportunity yeah. for people is to give them access to, to knowledge, to skills, to networks. Mm -hmm. these, are the, these are the kinds of things that I got through my education. I mentioned I grew up in a, in a small farming town yeah. where as an ambitious young kid who wanted to make something of himself, who wanted to leave his mark on the world, I often felt um, very uncertain about my future. Like I said, high unemployment, not a lot of opportunity. Getting a scholarship to come to San Jose to a Catholic uh, boys prep school, I went to Bellarmine here in San Jose, changed my life. I mean, it, it, it opened doors that I knew were out there, but I didn't really even know existed. And um, so I just, I, you know, I think it's really important that we continue to prioritize creating opportunities formal education, but I would also say it's the after school programs and the extracurriculars and, you know, your parents supporting you and doing this yeah. kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's giving people internships, you yeah. know, travel, you know, just get, giving young people exposure because they're like sponges. You guys are learning so yeah. much yeah. and growing. I'm a big believer in that because it really, ultimately, that's what determines the quality of our future is how much we, we empower and invest in our young people. I agree a hundred percent. And then also let's talk about some fun stuff. What do you see? What do you think? Where do you see like your vision? Um, the future of San Jose, like maybe like you don't necessarily go in 30 years, like what are even just like 10 years? What do you think yeah. the future of San Jose is? Because it's already like such a known place. It's literally like so many tech companies are here. It's a beautiful place. Awesome place. But where do you see the future going and headed? It's a great question. And for me, the North Star is taking something that has been true about our city in the past and then imagining what it would be in the future. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you look back over the last few decades, San Jose has done a better job than arguably any other American city at creating upward mobility for people. Uh, the Harvard economist Raj Chetty looked at economic mobility in American cities. And during the time frame he was examining, he found that San Jose did a better job of enabling people to move from the bottom income quartile all the way to the top. That's amazing. And so we have been a place historically, especially in the post-World War II era when we started building a lot of housing and really growing rapidly as a city and became a, a tech hub. We have been a place that has created massive opportunity yeah. and upward mobility for a very diverse population. We have welcomed people from all over the world. We're nearly 40% foreign born in San Jose. Over 50% of our households speak a language other than English at home. So we're an incredibly diverse city with massive upward mobility. Now, what are the drivers of that? Well, one, we've been very, as I mentioned, friend, we've been very immigrant friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a very dynamic economy, and I think those things go together. We have a lot of innovation. We lead the nation in patents per capita, including the most AI patents, uh, not just per capita, but in absolute terms. We have the most um, AI and machine learning patents. We also have been a place that was willing to make room for people. We built a lot of housing in the 20th century. 
So the question now, and I'm sorry to go on for so long, but as I, as I think through, if our North Star is to continue to be the leading city in the United States, if not the world, for creating economic opportunity and mobility for a diverse population, the question is, what does that mean in this moment? Because 50 years ago, it meant annexing farms and building single family neighborhoods. Today, I think it's gonna mean some other things. It's gonna mean building up, building vibrant, dense, mixed use urban centers like our downtown, investing in infrastructure like bringing BART to the heart of Silicon Valley and electrifying Caltrain. I think it's gonna mean leaning into the clean tech revolution and ensuring that we're building and growing in a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. It's going to be thinking with our partners at San Jose State and other universities about the future of education. So I'm trying to reimagine that North Star for this moment in time for, right. as we look forward. Just to, like, just to, for people maybe that might not know, what exactly does upward mobility mean? Yeah, so upward mobility is, is essentially a measure of uh, people's ability to go from lower income levels to higher as a proxy. It, it's about opportunity. So what it means is that a society that's highly upwardly mobile or has a lot of social mobility allows someone, uh, you, you are just as likely to be a top income earner if you're born into the, a family that is at low, an, a lower income level as if you're middle or higher born. And so it's the idea that and this is really the American dream. Oh, you're not, say that. it really is. It's that you're not trapped by the circumstances into which yes. you're born. There yes. is opportunity. We're very merit-based. We create ample opportunity for people to grow, to learn, to, and income is a proxy for that. I don't think it's all about money. Yeah. I think it's also about experience, quality of life, quality yeah. of relationships, but income tends to often be a proxy for that, that, that notion of, um, of achievement and success. Got it. Um, I don't really interview that many politicians, so I really wanted to ask you this one. It's what sure. all my teenage friends are talking about, rather, because they watched the recent debate. Okay, a lot of mixed feelings about just both of the people. Yeah. What, what do you What do you encourage teenagers to do to make sure, like, if they're eighteen, to make the right vote, or what? Just people are just confused right now. Yeah. Uh, what is your What is your take on this? Yeah. Well, you and your peers are not alone in, in being uh, maybe frustrated with your with your options at the at the top of the ticket. And we'll see how that plays out. It's going to be a very interesting few months yeah. as, we, as we watch this public debate play out. My my best advice to you and your peers would be to look locally. I actually think the action is at the local level. I've, I have always loved working in the community where you can actually see the impact that you have. When you think about just the city level of government alone, never mind, I mean, you've got county, school board, water district, transportation, et cetera. But just at the city level, you know, we're responsible for public safety, for parks, libraries, roads, sewers, our energy. Yeah. We, do, we do energy procurement. We do a tremendous amount just at the city level and there are many other local governmental bodies. And so if you wanna have an impact and feel good about your democracy and have and, and really know that your participation matters i think local is the best place to be and local is where we don't have these intense partisan battles where it becomes the the red team versus the blue team yeah. and the other side is evil locally you have to you're accountable for results you have to yeah. be able to sit down with people and work together even with people you disagree with and i think that's beautiful that's what democracy is really about yeah as we wrap up here, these are the last two questions that I asked all my guests. The first one is, what's your best advice for teens? Well, I mean, I was just giving you some advice on political participation and civic engagement. I, I guess to expand out a little bit, for teens, you know, it, it really would be, this sounds so simple, but it's been something that has really had a big impact on my life. It's showing up, it's putting yourself out there, it's taking risks it's being it's continuing to show up and be persistent it's staying late it's asking questions it's identifying mentors it's not being dissuaded because you hear no 10 times because the 11th time it might be yes or you might have a breakthrough it's really about exposing yourself to as many different opportunities and experiences as possible putting in the time and work on the ones where you're getting some traction and you're interested and you're finding opportunities and just keep showing up and throwing yourself out there and being involved. The more engaged you are, the more relationships you build, the more experiences you have, 
the better foundation you have for whatever else you want to do in life as, as you get kind of past educate your, your formal education and into your career. You said that really well. And I actually try to do all those things to just, you know, grow my podcast and my company. And I think you said it really well. It was, it was, uh, all the things you said, like, is the you know, honestly the best advice that I think can be given to teens. Um, last question of the day, what was your favorite part of being on the Oak Chuck Fish Show? Oh, yeah, I, th- I think you ask great questions. And I'm, I'm thrilled to see that you, in an entrepreneurial way here in the heart of Silicon Valley, are, are building something, something yeah. you're passionate about. And who knows where it will take you. Yeah. And I don't know if you'll stay in, in this line of work and have a career in media and communications or not. But I just, I, I love that you're building this show. And I appreciate the opportunity to have a quick conversation with you and look forward to following uh, all your success at San Jose State and beyond. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate guys. it. Thanks for having me on. Mayor Mamahim, Mayor of San Jose, California. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.